Chapter 1001 King Gong, when the private pleasure boat Binning was on moved near to the pleasure boat where the man was, she told Leng Shouting to sail parallel to it. Sir, why don't you get aboard my boat so that we can have a nice talk? Binning said to the man of the evil practice. Leng Shouting didn't realize that Binning aimed to meet the man until now, and he also recognized the man when he saw him. The man was obviously covered in yin. Ordinary people might not feel it, but Leng Shouting could. The man knew that Gunning came here because of him, but he willingly accepted Gunning's invitation since he was looking for her too. Why not? The man said, then directly jumped to the boat where Gunning was. Many people were shocked by the scene. Jesus, he just jumped to the boat over there. Is it King Gong? It was indeed King Gong. People who practiced his or her inner discipline hoped to become gods or goddesses one day in the future and without a doubt gods and goddesses could fly. Although the man hadn't finished practicing his inner discipline yet, he was good at King Gong at his level right now. However, he couldn't fly up high, just the height of two to three stories. Ordinary people had never seen King Gong with their own eyes before, so they couldn't believe that it was real. Leng Shouting understood that Gunning was going to catch the man, so he sailed the boat away in case innocent people were hurt. Did you come here for me? The man asked Gunning, although he already had the answer. Yes, Gunning replied. How did you find me? He asked again with curiosity. I smelt you. Gunning didn't bother to hide it. The man was displeased. Who are you? What's your aim? I'm simply an ordinary person, and I aim to destroy you because you're harmful, Gunning said. She didn't take herself as the savior, but she couldn't stand aside since she already found a member of the evil practice she would probably be the next victim. Even if she stayed away from them, they would still come to her for her magical power. It was also possible that she was reborn for a reason, but she wasn't aware of the reason right now. She had seen so many strange things which she didn't believe in at all during the previous incarnation, so she thought that they might be hints of what would happen to her in the future. She also sensed that she was going to have a fierce fight against the evil practice. Gunning cared a lot about her premonitions, because they were always right. She wanted to be prepared so that she could protect herself. It's none of your business, the man said. His target wasn't Gunning at the beginning, but Gunning had interrupted him again and again. Well, it indeed wasn't my business before, but now it's different because you want my magical power, Gunning said, then hid her magical power away, which surprised the man. He soon figured out why he couldn't find her before because she was able to hide her magical power. Hearing that, the man squinted with his eyes full of greed. You're right, I do want the magical power around your body, so you better give it to me right now, the man said, and attacked Gunning without delay. Even though the man wasn't confident that he could win in the fight against Gunning, he was left with no choice. Leng Shouting was worried about Gunning, but he knew that the man couldn't hurt her right now so he didn't get involved in the fight and sailed the boat far away from other pleasure boats. Gunning wouldn't hesitate to attack the man either, and she used her magical power to enhance her strength. Within a short time, she got control of the situation. The man gradually felt hard pressed to gain advantage in the fight, because of their violent fight. The private pleasure boat was shaking heavily. Luckily, they were far away from people now, and nobody could see them. The man was furious when Gunning got the better of him. He couldn't believe that she was simply an ordinary girl. She was covered in magical power, and unusually good at fighting, but had no smell of those who were practicing there in a discipline. The man was confused, but it wasn't the right time for him to think further about it. He was good at swimming, so jumped into the river without delay when he realized that it was impossible for him to win. Gunning, however, was unwilling to let him escape like that. She could breathe and talk in the water, so she jumped into the river after the man at once. Leng Shouting didn't know that Gunning had the help of her magical power, and got anxious the second she jumped into the river. Without hesitation, he followed her. Gunning didn't see Leng Shouting jumping into the water, but heard the sound. She knew that Leng Shouting was also good at swimming, but he was just a normal human being. She was worried about his safety but had to focus on the man at this key moment. It was very dark under the water at night, so Leng Shouting couldn't clearly see Gunning and the man, nor move with agility to reach Gunning's side. 
Chapter 1002 Levels of Oneness in a Discipline The man of the evil practice wasn't a normal human being after all, so he was able to see Gunning more clearly than Leng Shouting. In addition, he moved faster than Leng Shouting. Gunning with the help of her jade eyes, could clearly see where the man was and she swam freely like a fish in the water. When Gunning caught the man, she was already a long distance away from Leng Shouting. Leng Shouting was a little anxious, but couldn't touch Gunning at all. The man was shocked by Gunning's agile movements. He had thought that it would be easier for him to defeat Gunning in the water. So to his astonishment, things went the opposite way. He realized that he had taken Gunning lightly, and that this girl was totally beyond his imagination. The three of them had stayed in the water for a long time. Gunning was worried that Leng Shouting's life might be in danger, so she let the Zhao out and gave an order. Catch the man. Sure. The Zhao said and attacked the man at once. Gunning, at the same time, swam back to Leng Shouting. The man was stunned the moment he saw the Zhao. As a member of the evil practice, he was aware that ghosts and monsters really existed, but he was surprised to see the Zhao appear by the girl's side within a second. How is it possible? The man couldn't figure it out. Gunning met Leng Shouting in the water a few seconds later. Leng Shouting wasn't relieved until he touched her again but he was still worried about her and hugged her at once. Gunning understood that Leng Shouting was worried about her, but she had to push him up right now. Leng Shouting was almost out of air now, and he was worried that Gunning might also be out of breath, so he pulled Gunning while swimming upwards. Once they were out of the water, Leng Shouting hugged Gunning tightly before they were even on board. Ning Ning, are you alright? Don't worry, I'm fine, Gunning said. Really? Leng Shouting asked her again with concern. Relax, I'm really fine, Gunning said with a smile. Great, great. Leng Shouting was quite nervous. The Zhao was fighting against the man in the water, so they kept making violent waves, which pushed Leng Shouting and Gunning meters away. If it went on like that, they might cause damage to other innocent people. The problem was that the Zhao was super destructive and it was able to cause a tsunami if it used all of its force. Therefore, Gunning had to get rid of Leng Shouting right now. Shouting, please trust me and get back on the boat right now. I need to handle it well, or it might become uncontrollable. I'll go with you, Leng Shouting said. No, Shouting, there is something I can't tell you right now, but I promise I'll be fine. Gunning comforted Leng Shouting. Even though Leng Shouting was unwilling to leave her alone, he had to agree with it. He kissed her and said, be careful. I will, Gunning said, then got into the water again. She swam straight towards the man and the Zhao, while Ling Shouting listened to her and got back on the pleasure boat. In fact, there was no need for Gunning to be so worried, because the man was only at the fourth level of his inner discipline. The fourth level belonged to the middle rank of one's inner discipline. The levels of one's inner discipline could be divided into four ranks and each rank consisted of three levels. There were twelve levels in all. The first to the third level was junior rank, the fourth to the sixth level was middle rank, the seventh to the ninth level was senior rank, and the tenth to the twelfth level was the top rank. If one could reach the twelfth level, he or she could become a god or goddess. Nevertheless, it was super hard to do that nowadays, because the magical power was very rare. Gunning read the above information from the internet, and she wasn't sure whether it was right. Therefore, she had to get to know more details about it in real life. People who were practicing their inner discipline were totally different from normal human beings, and they could easily beat a normal human being in a fight. They didn't rely on physical strength after all. Since the man was just at the fourth level, he couldn't defeat Gunning let alone the Zhao. Even Gunning wasn't confident that she could control the Zhao without her jade eyes. That being the case, the Zhao twisted its body around the man within minutes. Although the Zhao was greedy for the man's inner discipline, it didn't dare to swallow him before Gunning gave the order. The man was indeed unusually good at swimming, because he wasn't affected after staying in the water for over 10 minutes. Chapter 1003 Catch the Man Members of the evil practice kept absorbing any magical power or yin they could find. With the help of yin, the man was able to stay in the water for around half an hour. My lady, what do you want me to do next? The Zhao asked Gunning once she moved near. I need to bring him back to ask him something, Gunning said. Oh. The Zhao was a little disappointed, 
but soon forgot about it, even though the man's inner discipline wasn't bad, Gunning's magical power was much better, since the man was useful for Gunning, it wouldn't steal him, when the man saw Gunning talking to the Zhao, he was shocked, he knew that Gunning couldn't be a normal human being, but he was still shocked by her unbelievable skills, not only could she move freely in the water, but she could also talk with animals, Gunning thought for a while, then added, you can absorb half of his inner discipline in case he escapes, Gunning understood that the Zhao needed the man's inner discipline to improve its own, and she was also unwilling to kill the man herself, she had killed a lot of people before, but it wasn't a pleasant thing to do, if the Zhao absorbed half of the man's inner discipline, it would be easier for Gunning to control him, thanks. The Zhao's eyes lit up and began to do it without delay, the man, however, was scared, but he couldn't struggle at all, before long, the Zhao absorbed half of the man's inner discipline, and the man became weak in an instant, at this time, Gunning took out a rope and tied the man up, she put the Zhao back into the telepathic eye space and pulled the man to the surface of the water, the man couldn't talk until they were out of the water, I know what you want to find out, but I won't tell you anything, I dare you to kill me, the man understood that Gunning aimed to destroy the evil practice, so it was impossible that she would set him free even if he told her what she wanted to know, Gunning didn't bother to argue with the man right now, because she needed to get onto the boat as soon as possible, Leng Shouting focused on the surface of the water the entire time, once Gunning showed up, he sailed the boat over, and stopped by her side, Ning Ning, Leng Shouting reached out his hand and pulled her up along with the man, he didn't have time to pay attention to the man, but checked Gunning's body at once, Ning Ning, are you alright, I'm fine, Gunning smiled at him, Leng Shouting didn't see any injuries on Gunning's body, and released a deep breath, the next second, his sight fell on the man with his eyes full of hatred, if it hadn't been for the man, Gunning wouldn't have stayed in the cold water for so long, the man was terrified by Leng Shouting's hostile glare, he sensed something familiar from Leng Shouting's body, but couldn't remember it right now, he believed that Leng Shouting couldn't be a normal human being either, Ning Ning, what will you do to him? Leng Shouting asked Gunning, they couldn't let the government handle it, because it might cause unnecessary alarm, common citizens would also be frightened if this news went abroad, I want to know more about those who are practicing inner discipline first, then I'll figure out a way to handle it well, Gunning said, Gunning was a little worried that the man might tell Ling Shouting about the Zhao, because he already witnessed it, if he really said it aloud, Gunning would tell Ling Shouting how she got the Zhao then, Ling Shouting was always respectful of Gunning's decisions, so he didn't ask further, I can help you with it, and you can go have a warm shower now, in case you catch a cold, Leng Shouting said, I'm fine, and I'm still physically strong, I need to solve this problem right now, Gunning said, she didn't want to delay it, alright, although Leng Shouting was worried about Gunning, he wouldn't stop her from doing what she wanted, he was indeed a great boyfriend who respected his girlfriend and listened to her, some men wouldn't just demand that their girlfriends do what they wanted without showing any respect, it's useless, I won't tell you anything, the man said loudly, he was doomed to death anyway, really, what if I keep torturing you but don't kill you? Gunning squinted at him, you the man was furious, no one was willing to suffer endless torture without death, however, the man was still reluctant to give in, are you telling me or not? Gunning asked in a cold tone, the man remained silent, he was gambling that Gunning would kill him before she got what she wanted, let me be honest with you, I'm not a patient person, if you refuse to tell me, I'll figure another way out, you know that members of the evil practice all ache to get what I have, Gunning said, chapter 1004 what happens to the man at the end, since the man was reluctant to tell Gunning what she wanted to hear, Gunning was unwilling to waste much more time on him, as long as there were other members of the evil practice, she had plenty of time to attract them over, the magical power around her body was something that members of the evil practice wanted most, Leng Shouting and the man were surprised when Gunning said that, Leng Shouting was worried about her safety, the man, however, realized that his life could be in danger now, it was true that she had what members of the evil practice wanted, and they would come to find her sooner or later, thinking of that, an idea dawned on the man, even if he was going to die, he wouldn't die alone, in fact, 
People who were practicing there in a discipline were all competitors in each other's eyes. There were also grudges among them. The man himself had a major enemy, and the two of them had acted against each other for over a hundred years, but neither of them could defeat the other. Since Gunning was able to catch him, it wouldn't be hard for her to catch his enemy. Therefore, he could seize this chance to destroy his major enemy. Fine, I can tell you whatever you want to know, he said. Gunning actually didn't believe that he would tell her the truth, but she was willing to hear some. How many people are practicing there in a discipline in this world now? She asked. Not many, but not a few either. About hundreds I think, but most of them are at low levels. The man said. Where are they now? Gunning asked. They live in their own areas, and stay away from normal human beings. The parallel space where they are is as large as a village. Only those who reach the middle rank can come to this world, and normal human beings aren't able to go to the space where they live. The man said. Gunning had read it before in a certain novel. Although she wasn't sure whether what the man said was true, it was highly possible to be the truth. Leng Shouting couldn't believe his ears, but he soon accepted it. Since members of the evil practice really existed, there should be the space where they lived too. The man continued, those who are practicing there in a discipline seldom move in this world. Even if they come here, they prefer to stay in isolated mountains because they can find magical power there. I heard that there is another male member of the evil practice in the mountain area of Burma. It's said that many treasure hunters were killed there, so the place is filled with yin. Since you can smell me, it's easy for you to find him. Hearing that, Gunning understood that the man was trying to use her to destroy his enemy. She didn't mind, because the Zhao could help her. She was only worried that the man just gave her a perfunctory answer. The public jade bid in Burma would begin in half a month, so she would go to Burma as planned anyway. Ning Ning. If you're really going there, I'll go with you, Leng Shouting said. He knew that he couldn't change her mind, but he could at least go there with her to protect her. There will be a public jade bid held in Burma about half a month later. I'm going to attend it anyway. If you are free at that time you can go with me, but if you'll be busy with your work, you don't need to go with me, Gunning said. All right, Leng Shouting said. He understood that Gunning didn't want to interrupt his work. Great, let's go now, Gunning said. Leng Shouting knew that Gunning was going to punish the man. No matter what she would do to the man, he wouldn't get involved. The man was an evil person, and Leng Shouting had no sympathy for him. Be careful, Leng Shouting said to Gunning then went to sail the boat. Gunning directly threw the man into the river, and let the Zhao out to swallow him. When she got back to Leng Shouting's side, she said, I just threw him into the river. Hearing that, Leng Shouting nodded, but said nothing. The man was tied up before he was thrown into the river, so it was impossible for him to survive. Shouting, do you think it's too cruel? Gunning couldn't help asking him. No, he deserves it, Leng Shouting said. Well, I can do that for you in the future if you're going to kill someone. If one killed too many people, he or she would be dogged by misfortune. Although it was a superstition, Leng Shouting still hoped that he could do it for Gunning. Gunning smiled, but said nothing. She obviously felt touched because she understood that Leng Shouting was doing his best to protect her, but she was unwilling to let him suffer misfortune for her either. Ning Ning, go dry your hair and clothing now. In case other people find out, Leng Shouting said. Sure, Gunning said, then went to get the hair dryer. They were in a private pleasure boat, and it had the same layout as their home would as was stocked with daily necessities. Actually, there were dry clothes in Gunning's telepathic eye space, but she couldn't take them out right in front of Leng Shouting. Luckily, it was much warmer now, and Gunning was only wearing a thin piece of clothing, so it was easy for her to dry it. Chapter 1005 We re already a couple. Shouting, go dry yourself too, Gunning said. Sure, you can sail the boat now. Leng Shouting let Gunning take the helm. Before long, Leng Shouting dried his own clothing. Before Gunning and Leng Shouting got back to the shore, the Zhao was back. So Gunning put it back to the telepathic eye space when Leng Shouting wasn't paying attention to her. Although it was better for the Zhao to practice its inner discipline in the river, it was running out of magical power, so it needed to absorb more magical power now. They went ashore a while later, then went to buy new clothing in a shopping mall to make sure that Kao Wenxin and the others weren't waiting for them for too long. 
It was almost 11 p.m., but some stores were still open. After putting on new clothes, they left for the bar where their friends were at once. It wasn't far away, and they arrived a few minutes later. Once they met their friends, they began to drink and chat together. At the same time, the members of the Tang family already went to bed. Since Gu Man and Tang Yun Fan were married now, Gu Man slept with him in the same bedroom. Tang Yun Fan couldn't wait a second longer to share some private time with Gu Man. When they were back in the bedroom, Gu Man went to take a shower first. Thinking of what was going to happen later, Gu Man felt shy and nervous. She deliberately wasted a lot of time in the bathroom, but had to put on her sleeping gown in the end. However, the second she saw herself in the mirror, she flushed red in an instant. The sleeping gown she was wearing was half transparent, and she looked quite seductive in it. Gu Man hesitated to leave the bathroom. Tang Yun Fan wasn't dumb. When Gu Man had stayed in the bathroom for a long time, he understood that she had to be very nervous and probably a little scared. In fact, he was also nervous. They had been apart for so many years after all. Nevertheless, he would still do what he ached to do as a man. Man, are you ready? Tang Yun Fan walked to the door of the bathroom. Gu Man panicked a little when she heard Tang Yun Fan's voice. Um, yeah? Afterwards, she opened the door slowly. The moment Tang Yun Fan saw Gu Man, he could barely move his eyes away from her body. Well, you can go take a shower now. Gu Man slipped out of the bathroom. Tang Yun Fan could catch Gu Man right now, but he didn't do that because he indeed needed a shower to be prepared. Gu Man got in the bed without delay and covered herself with the quilt. She still hoped to avoid it, but she knew that it was unavoidable. In addition, they were a couple now, and it was quite normal for a couple, especially a newly married couple, to have sex with each other. Compared with Gu Man, Tang Yun Fan finished the shower within a few seconds. He directly walked out in his bathrobe, hearing the sound of opening the door. Gu Man got more nervous. Tang Yun Fan, however, felt amused when he saw that Gu Man had hidden herself in the quilt. The light was very bright in the bedroom, even Tang Yun Fan felt a little embarrassed, so he turned the bright light off and only left a night light which gave off a faint light. After that, he walked to the bed. Hearing the footsteps coming closer, Gu Man's heart was pounding. Tang Yun Fan got in the bed then reached out his arms to pull Gu Man over. Gu Man trembled a little, but didn't resist it. She felt aroused when Tang Yun Fan's palms covered her body. Man, we're already a couple now, and tonight is the first night of our marriage, Tang Yun Fan said by Gu Man's ears in a low deep voice. I Gu Man didn't know what to say. Tang Yun Fan turned Gu Man's body and pressed on it, but he didn't put his entire weight on her body, in case she felt uncomfortable. Gu Man froze and didn't dare to meet his eyes. Without further ado, Tang Yun Fan kissed her. A passionate kiss couldn't satisfy Tang Yun Fan's need, so he began to undress Gu Man. In the beginning, Gu Man was quite reluctant to do it, but she didn't push Tang Yun Fan away. Man, relax, Tang Yun Fan said. Gu Man also wanted to relax, but she wasn't able to do that right now. As time went by, Gu Man gradually opened her arms and legs for her beloved man and husband. Tang Yun Fan was more than thrilled when Gu Man was ready for him. Chapter 1006 The first morning after their wedding day. In order to distract Gu Man, Tang Yun Fan kept kissing her all around her body. Although they had been apart for 19 years, they soon became familiar with each other's body. Tang Yun Fan's bed was very good so they didn't cause loud sounds no matter how they moved on it. Moreover, each room of the Tang family's house had good insulation, so others couldn't hear any sounds from rooms. The two of them enjoyed every second of that night. Tang Jiakai proposed to have night snacks when they had fun till 12 a.m. Everyone agreed, and they left for the night snack street together. It was already 2 a.m. when they finished eating night snacks. Gunning's relatives all stayed in her house tonight, so it wasn't convenient for her to bring Leng Shouting home. Therefore, she decided to stay out for a night. Tang Jiang and Tang Jiakai went back to the Tang family's house, while Kao Wenxin and Xin Bi went to Kao Wenxin's house, and Hao Ran and the others went to stay in the Huangdong Hotel. Gunning and Leng Shouting went to Shengxi Hotel. The first thing they did when they went back to the hotel was take a shower. After all, today was a long day. Ning Ning. Why don't we shower together? Gunning was about to enter the bathroom and Leng Shouting followed her. Gunning felt a little shy, 
but didn't turn him down. Once they took off their clothing, they began to have sex. Normally, it took around a dozen minutes to finish a shower, but they stayed inside for nearly an hour. In addition, it didn't mean that it was the end when they finally left the bathroom, because they moved to another place to make love. After hours of lovemaking, they only fall asleep at daybreak. The next morning, Gaman woke up at 7 a.m. The second she opened her eyes, she saw Tang Yan Fan staring at her with a broad smile on his face. She flushed and turned her head away. What? Do you feel shy? Tang Yan Fan smiled. Gaman flushed redder and covered her head with the quilt. Seeing Gu Man being so shy, Tang Yan Fan stopped teasing her. All right, have more sleep, and I'll tell the kitchen to prepare some nutritious soup for you. They had made love countless times last night, and he knew that she had to be exhausted now. No. Gu Man drew her head out of the quilt. It's late now, and we should get up. Gu Man was unwilling to leave a bad impression on members of the Tang family. You need to have a good rest now. Don't worry about it. Nobody will criticize you if you sleep a while longer, Tang Yan Fan said. Thinking of what had happened last night, Guman felt uneasy again. I'm fine. I can get up now. Saying that, Guman sat up, and Tang Yan Fan didn't stop her. You're fine? It seems I didn't work hard enough last night. He pouted like a little boy. Guman was struck dumb for a second. Stop it. She flushed again. Stop what? Tang Yan Fan pretended like he didn't understand. Gu Man, however, ignored him, and ran to the bathroom in her sleeping gown. Tang Yan Fan laughed watching Gu Man run away from him. He hadn't laughed so happily in a long time. Gu Man finished her shower, but Tang Yan Fan stood in her way once she walked out of the bathroom. What are you doing here? I need to use the bathroom, Tang Yan Fan said with an evil smile. Oh, Gu Man said then avoided him while walking outside. However, just as she moved, Tang Yan Fan caught her and kissed her wildly. Gu Man was very seductive in his eyes, and he failed to control his desire. Gu Man was surprised, but didn't struggle at all. Tang Yan Fan didn't let her go until she was almost out of breath. Man, you're so gorgeous, Tang Yan Fan said by her ears. Gu Man flushed red, then ran to the walk-in closet. Tang Yan Fan smiled and walked into the bathroom. Gu Man put on her clothing and Tang Yun Fan left the bathroom at the same time, but he just covered his lower body in a towel. He exercised a lot, so he had a good body with obvious muscles, which stunned Gu Man. Seeing Gu Man's reaction, Tang Yun Fan was satisfied. How is it? Do you like my body? Gu Man turned her face away and dodged his question. Tang Yun Fan, however, was unwilling to give it up and pressed Gu Man against the closet. Tell me. Do you like it? Yeah, Gu Man said. She was telling the truth. Even though they already had sex with each other last night, she didn't see his body clearly because of the dim light. She didn't get the chance to clearly see Tang Yan Fan's body until now. How much do you like it? Tang Yan Fan asked again. Hearing that, Gu Man ached to escape. She liked it very much, but felt too shy to say it aloud, so she changed the topic at once. Um. Why don't you put on some clothes now? Don't catch a cold. Saying that, she tried to push Tang Yan Fan's arms away. However, it was impossible for her to push his strong arms away given her strength. Chapter 1007 Appreciate I. Tang Yan Fan, however, was unwilling to give it up and pressed Gu Man against the closet. Tell me, do you like it? Yeah, Gu Man said. She was telling the truth. Even though they already had sex with each other last night. She didn't see his body clearly because of the dim light, so she didn't get the chance to clearly see Tang Yan Fan's body until now. How much do you like it? Tang Yan Fan asked again, hearing that, Gu Man ached to escape. She liked it very much, but felt too shy to say it aloud, so she changed the topic at once. Um, why don't you put on your clothes now? Don't catch a cold. Saying that, she tried to push Tang Yan Fan's arms away. However, it was impossible for her to push his strong arms away given her strength. If you don't answer my question, I won't let you out, Tang Yan Fan said like a little boy. Gu Man was amused by his childlike expression. Of course I like it very much, she said in the end. Great. Tang Yan Fan was satisfied. You can appreciate it when you're free. Gu Man felt like laughing, but said nothing. After changing, the two of them went downstairs together. It was Sunday, so the others were also just waking up. Tang Haifeng was an old man, and he didn't sleep much at night, 
so he was already up. When Gaman met the other members of the Tang family in the hall, she felt a little embarrassed because she thought that she got up too late. However, Jiang Lihua asked her with surprise, Man, why did you get up so early? Although Jiang Lihua couldn't hear the sounds, she knew what they had done last night without asking. Jiang Lihua turned to look at Tang Yunfan the next second. Why don't you have more sleep today? She was blaming Tang Yunfan for not taking good care of his wife. In fact, Jiang Lihua was really worried that Tang Yunfan couldn't take good care of Guman, because he had lived alone for so many years before. She insisted on getting up now, Tang Yunfan said and felt aggrieved. Guman flushed. Um, it's not early and we can't sleep any longer. Seeing that Guman was feeling shy, Jiang Lihu didn't talk about that topic any further, but said to Guman, Man, you don't need to be so demure in our family. Nobody will judge or criticize you. We just hope that you can live a happy life. Thanks, I understand, Guman said with a smile. After that, Guman went to greet Tang Haifeng. When Tang Haifeng saw Guman, he also asked her why she got up so early. Guman flushed red the entire time. Guning received Tang Yunfan's call at 9 a.m. He told her to come back to the Tang family's house for lunch since Ge King and her other relatives were leaving today. However, Guning told him that her friends would be going back to city after day two, and that she would dine with them. Hearing that, Tang Yunfan invited her friends to share lunch together in the Tang family's house, and said that he could send them to the airport. Gu Man who stood aside heard that and said that her friends were leaving City B today too, so Tang Yunfan invited her friends to come over as well. After hanging up the call, Gunning called Hao Ran and the others to tell them to be prepared. Hao Ran also told his mother that they would be dining together in the Tang family's house later. At 9.30 am, Gunning and Leng Shouting left for the Huangdan Hotel to fetch Chu Peihan and the others. Chu Peihan and the others were already in the hall when they arrived, so they went to the Tang family's house together. Mrs. Hao and her friends hadn't been to the Tang family's house before, but Hao Ran had. So he told his mother how splendid and large the Tang family's house was. Even though they were aware that the Tang family was the richest family in City B, they were still shocked by the layout of the house. The Tang family's house was the largest and most beautiful house that they had ever seen. Actually, there were many people who lived in a luxurious house even though they weren't as rich as the Tang family. It wasn't true that the richest people would live in the most luxurious houses. Instead, some of those rich people preferred to live comfortably. The Tang family's house looked a little ancient, but it was because it had been their property for generations. Some common rich people might spend half of their wealth on a house, while some didn't care much about where they lived. In fact, the richer the person was, the less he or she cared about material goods. Mrs. Hao and her friends were envious of Guman because she married into a very good family, but they weren't jealous of her because Guman and Tang Yunfan were a perfect match. They had already fallen in love with each other many years ago after all. When Guning and the others arrived, Ge King and her relatives were already there. Kao Wenxin's family and Xinbi were also present. Kao Wenxin's parents approved of Xinbi so he was invited too. They enjoyed the lunch in harmony and happiness. Members of the Tang family hadn't been so satisfied about their life in a long time, and Guman along with Guning brought them priceless happiness. After lunch, they sat around the hall and chatted while drinking tea together. Half an hour later, they set off for the airport. Leng Shouting and Xinbi would be on the same flight, so they sat in the same car, while Hao Ran and the others shared a large bus. On the way to the airport, they all felt a little sad, because none of them wanted to leave. However, they had to leave. Chapter 1008 Xiang Antique When they arrived at the airport, they went to get their flight tickets. Guning already booked flight tickets for Hao Ran and her other friends, and Tang Yunfan had booked some for Mrs. Hao and Guman's other friends. They would leave on the same flight. Hao Ran and the others would leave at 2.10 p.m while Ling Shouting and Xinbi would leave at 2.40 p.m. That being the case, Hao Ran and the others went into the lounge after taking the tickets, while Ling Shouting and Xinbi went to sit in a restaurant for a while. Ling Shouting and Xinbi didn't leave Gunning and Kao Wenxin until 1.50 p.m. They needed to get into the lounge half an hour before the departure time. When it was time for them to say goodbye to each other, they all wished the time could stop at this moment. Ning Ning. Where are you going next? 
how when Xin asked Gunning when Leng Shouting and Xin Bi were gone. I'm going to the antique street. How about you? Gunning said. Gunning planned to send some real antiques to Xiang Yun Antiques Tour. Du Leifeng told her that he had sold several real antiques a few days ago. Before she left for Burma, she also needed to send some real antiques to the Xiang Yun Antiques Tour in the capital. The branch of Xiang Yun Antiques Tour in the capital was a famous store with a long history so it was more popular than that in City B. Both of them were running out of real antiques, so Ganing needed to replenish the stocks. Um, I have nothing else to do, so I'll go with you, Cao Wenxin said. Sure. Ganing said, then they went to the antique street together. On their way there, Cao Wenxin played on her phone reading the news. When she read a piece of the latest news, she was astonished and exclaimed, Jesus, there is an antique store at the antique street, which had a sudden collapse this morning and broke many real antiques. The owner of it suffers a loss of 30 million yuan. Hearing that, Gunning cocked her eyebrow. What's its name? Xiang Antique, Cao Wenxin said. Gunning had heard of it from Du Leifeng's mouth, and he told her that the store always looked creepy because it collected too many ancient objects from graves. An idea dawned on Gunning. She thought that the antique store might be filled with yin since the owner had collected too many ancient objects from graves, which could be the cause of the collapse. It was possible. But there also could be another reason. Anyway, Gunning decided to have a look herself. She was curious about the sources of those ancient objects too. Oh, look at this comment. Someone says that the store collapsed because it's full of too much yin. Cao Wenxin was amused by the above comment because she didn't believe in yin at all. Gunning, however, was struck dumb for a second. She held the same idea, and thought that it was highly possible now. There is another comment saying that those real antiques Xiang Antique just bought are harmful to human bodies. Cao Wenxin couldn't believe her eyes, although it actually might be the truth. Well, more people believe that the building is too old and some think that it might have been done by the owner's enemies. When they had almost reached the antique street, Gunning's and Cao Wenxin's phones rang at the same time. They didn't bother to check the caller's name, because they knew that it must be a call from Leng Shouting and Xinbi. Gunning was driving, so she put on her Bluetooth earphones. Leng Shouting and Xinbi told Gunning and Cao Wenxin that they were already in the plane. They would fly over to visit them again during the next vacation. Then they chatted for a short while and hung up. Leng Shouting and Xin Bi sat in the second row on the left side of the first class. Leng Shouting sat by the window, while Xin Bi sat in the aisle seat. Both of them were tall, handsome young men, so they attracted a lot of attention from the stewardesses once they were aboard. They were already used to it, and ignored all of the stewardesses. Those stewardesses were heartbroken. They all wished to find a rich, handsome young boyfriend like them and they wondered what kind of woman could have them. What they didn't know was that they actually felt quite lucky to have their girlfriend. Neither Leng Shouting nor Xinbi thought that women should love them just because of their outstanding appearances. On the contrary, they didn't enjoy the feeling when every woman was paying attention to them. They were both loyal to their girlfriends, and wouldn't bother to flirt with other females. Although those stewardesses couldn't attract their attention, they still tried but were doomed to fail. Gunning stopped the car at the parking lot of the antique street, then told Cao Wenxin to buy two bottles of water. Afterwards, she pretended to pick up something from the trunk, but actually took out a wooden box with around ten pieces of real antiques inside from the telepathic eye space. When Cao Wenxin came back, she saw the wooden box in Gunning's hands. Ning Ning, where did you get so many real antiques? She asked with curiosity. Chapter 1009 The Batch of Ancient Object I found them by accident, Gunning said. Come on, let's go to Xiang Yun Antique Store now. She couldn't tell Cao Wenxin that she had dug ancient graves or stolen sunken treasure. Even though she knew that Cao Wenxin would keep it secret, it was better if fewer people were aware of it. Grave digging was illegal after all. The government might arrest those who stole valuable ancient objects from graves. Gunning wasn't worried that the government would take her real antiques away because she had the support of the Leng family and the Tang family now. Nobody was willing to act against her. Really? You're so lucky. Cao Wenxin was surprised. Gunning smiled, but said nothing. After the opening ceremony of Xiang Yun Antiques Tour, most of the owners of the antique stores on this street got to know Gunning, 
so they all greeted her kindly when she appeared. Nice to see you, Miss Gu, nice to meet you too, Ganning greeted them politely as well. News of the wedding held by the Tang family hadn't gone abroad yet, so not many people were aware that she was Tang Haifeng's biological granddaughter. If they had known Ganning's family background, they would have been shocked. Duji Antiques could barely stay afloat now, and Du Leifeng's stepmother, Li Fengxia, couldn't be more jealous of Xiangyun Antiques tour. However, she didn't dare to do anything about it since Ganning was the boss of Xiangyun Antiques tour. How could Du Leifeng be so lucky? Li Fengxia muttered to herself, If the girl had bought my store, I could have made a lot of money. Li Fengxia only cared about money. At this moment, she suddenly saw Ganning walking by which scared her. She thought that Ganning had heard what she just said, and panicked because of her guilty conscience. Ganning had indeed heard what she just said, but didn't bother to pay attention to her at all. Li Fengxia released a long breath when Ganning ignored her and walked away. Xiangyun Antique Store was only 10 meters away from Duji Antiques, so Ganning soon arrived at her destination. There were a few customers in Xiangyun Antique Store when she walked inside. Hi, boss. Du Leifeng welcomed Ganning at once. Those customers all looked over when they heard Du Leifeng greeting Ganning. Hi, Miss Gu. They said to Ganning. Hi, please enjoy yourselves, Ganning said with a smile. Sure, they said. At the beginning, they just came here to look around, but now felt like buying something after meeting Ganning. I came here with something, Ganning said. She made a hand gesture and told Du Leifeng to follow her up to the office. Du Leifeng was a little confused but followed Ganning without delay. He understood that Ganning might have brought some real antiques, but he was still shocked when he saw them with his own eyes. Du Leifeng was suspicious of the sources of these ancient objects, but didn't ask further about it. Du Leifeng had attended the wedding held by the Tang family yesterday, so he knew that Ganning was a member of the Tang family. He believed that she was able to handle it well even if she got those antiques illegally. Oh. I heard something terrible just happened to Xiang Antique. Do you know the details? Ganning asked all of a sudden. I went to see it this morning, and I know that the batch of ancient objects is real after the expert's appraisal. It's said that they're covered in yin, which caused the collapse, but more people believe that the building was just too old. Du Leifeng said. It was hard for ordinary people to believe in yin. Even Du Leifeng held doubts. Hearing that. Ganning was more sure that the collapse of Xiang Antique had something to do with that batch of ancient objects, but she still needed to find out more about it. Therefore, she left the wooden box to do laughing, then walked out with Cao Wenxin. Xiang Antique was located farther along the antique street, so they needed to walk for a while. On the way, many people who recognized Ganning greeted her politely and Ganning also smiled at them. In fact, some of them were quite jealous of Xiangyun Antiques tour, but none of them dared to annoy Ganning. Since they couldn't mess with her, they decided that they should maintain a good relationship with her. Chapter 1010 Zuanzan and Jiang Zezing Once they neared Xiang Antique, Ganning felt a strong sense of yin. The closer she was to the store, the stronger the yin was. When she finally stood in front of the building, the concentration of yin reached the highest point. Xiang Antique was an old building of two floors. It was indeed very old, but wasn't old enough to collapse right now. The second Ganning sensed the yin she knew that it wasn't the building's problem. This place was already surrounded by yellow warning lines, and the owner of Xiang Antique was in the nearby police station. Ganning used her jade eyes and found that the place was completely covered in yin. If an ordinary person walked near, he or she might feel unusually cold and uncomfortable. Thanks to the yellow warning lines, nobody would walk near here. Ganning was able to deal with the yin here, but she couldn't do it in the day, so she had to come back again at night. Afterwards, Ganning left with Cao Wenxin. They went back to the Tang family's house together. However, Cao Wenxin received Zhu Anzin's call on the way home and Zhu Anzin told her that Jiang Zezing was just hit by a car because he dashed out to rescue a kid in the middle of the road. He had been admitted to the military general hospital. Zhu Anzin was crying in fear on the phone, so she didn't tell Cao Wenxin many details. Cao Wenxin was also scared, so they immediately went straight to the military general hospital. Ganning wouldn't sit on her hands if a terrible accident happened to her friend. Even though Jiang Zezing was simply an acquaintance of hers, 
He was Kao Wenxin's friend after all. Ganning sped up and quickly drove to the military general hospital. Twenty minutes later, Ganning and Kao Wenxin arrived. Gao Chengyun and the others were also in Jiang Zezing's ward. Jiang Zezing's face was a little pale, and his whole right arm along with his right foot were wrapped in bandages, but he was still conscious and seemed to be fine. Jiang Zezing, how are you right now? Kao Wenxin asked him with concern. Jiang Zezing smiled and said, I am fine. Don't worry, I just have some abrasions on my arm and twisted my foot. Jiang Zezing breathed normally, which proved that he was indeed fine. Seriously? You don't think you're badly injured? Zhu Anzen glared at him with her red eyes that were swollen after crying for a long time. Jiang Zezing closed his mouth at once. Zhu Anzen cared too much about him so she was quite nervous and anxious especially because she witnessed the scene. Most importantly, Zhu Yuanzhen liked Jiang Zezing. Even if he just had some abrasions on his arm and twisted his foot, she thought that they were serious injuries. Jiang Zezing understood Zhu Yuanzhen's feelings towards him, so he didn't argue with her in case she got angrier. In fact, Jiang Zezing had a good impression of Zhu Yuanzhen, but Kao Wenxin had always been his love so he directly ignored Zhu Anzen. However, he understood it was impossible for him to be Kao Wenxin's boyfriend now, so he chose to move on and felt touched by Zhu Anzen's care towards him. It seemed a little unfair, because he turned to Zhu Anzen after knowing that Kao Wenxin became another man's girlfriend, and Zhu Anzen seemed to be a backup. Jiang Zezing felt a little guilty, but Zhu Anzen didn't mind it at all because Kao Wenxin and him were just friends the entire time. She wouldn't force Jiang Zezing to accept her even if she liked him very much. It was much more painful to be with someone who didn't love you than to keep a distance from him. They couldn't be friends if they broke up in the future. Ganing took out a porcelain bottle and handed it to Zhu Anzen. Apply this medicine to his injuries, and he'll be fine. Really? Zhu Anzen's eyes lit up at once. Um. His injuries are wrapped. Can I apply the medicine to his injuries right now? Zhu Anzen asked worriedly. Zhu Anzen was even more worried about Jiang Zezing than he was. Of course you can, Ganning said. Thanks. Zhu Anzen took the bottle at once, then unwrapped the bandages for Jiang Zezing. Jiang Zezing also trusted Ganning and thanked her with sincerity. Miss Gu, thank you so much. You're welcome. Ganning said. Zhu Anzen unwrapped the bandages around Jiang Zezing's arm and foot with great care, in case he felt the pain. Seeing Zhu Anzen being so careful, Jiang Zezing had mixed emotions. When Zhu Anzen saw his injuries in the open, she felt like crying and had tears in her eyes, but in case the tears blocked her sight, she fought them back as she applied medicine to the injuries. Jiang Zezing's heart ached for her. Ganning glanced at Kao Wenxin then walked out. Kao Wenxin also gave Gao Chengyun and Anran a look, then they left together. Jiang Zezing understood what they were doing, but said nothing. It seems like they're in love. Anran said once, they were outside. It wasn't a bad thing if they could be a couple. Well, I guess it depends on Jiang Zezing, Kao Wenxin said. It wasn't a secret that Zhu Anzen liked Jiang Zezing after all. Jiang Zezing felt the comfortable coldness when Zhu Anzen applied Ganning's medicine to his injuries, which surprised him. Thanks, Jiang Zezing thanked Zhu Anzen when it was done, 